Hello again, guys, and welcome back. Um, I just wanted to come on and share a quick word with you guys today. Uh, what God has put upon my heart concerning all the things that are going on in this world. Um, first of all, I want to say God's hand is with those that are walking in the glorious light of the gospel. His hand is still with the righteous. His hand is with those that are walking by faith and not by sight. His hand are with those that, have, that are crucified to the world and are crucified with Christ. His hand is with those that are denying themselves, picking up their cross and following that glorious light, Jesus Christ, that have come out of darkness into his marvelous light, that are not listening to words of deception, or not listening to false teachers or preachers, not listening to people tingling in their ears while they're walking in darkness, telling them that it's okay to live in your sin, or that you can never stop sinning after you've received grace. Those are heresies. Those are darkness. Those are angels of light. And no marvel for Satan transforms himself to an angel of light. They're ministers of righteousness, deceiving, trying to deceive, if possible, the elect, putting stumbling block before the children of Israel. Shun those things. Those are wicked things, guys. But I want to talk today. Who's God's hand with? Israel or Palestine or Hamas? Who, who is he with? God's hand is still with the righteous. If a righteous man is living in Palestine and he's walking by faith in his heart, living obedient unto God, God's hand is with that man. If there's a man in Israel doing that, God's hand is with that man. If there's a man that's walking in a, with a wicked heart in Palestine or Hamas, God's hand is against that man. If there's a wicked man that has a wicked heart walking in Israel during these times of war, God's hand is against that man, for God is against those that do iniquity. For the wrath of God is coming upon all the sons of disobedience, the Bible says. We're going to go back to the beginning of Genesis. In the beginning, uh, Genesis chapter 1, we're going to look at something, how God was dividing things from the beginning, and he's still dividing them in the end, for he has not changed. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. See, the light is good. They're the sheep. They're the wheat. And God divided the light from the darkness. God was doing this from the beginning. He was dividing the light from the darkness. The sheep from the goats. The wheat from the tares. The just from the unjust. Hallelujah. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Now, turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. This talks about the day of the Lord. Amen. Now, God was doing this from the beginning. He was dividing the light from the darkness. Now, guys, we all started in the darkness. But when we heard the word, which was the glorious light, remember, Jesus is the word made flesh. We heard his words and we believed that he, he would give us grace, empowerment by grace to overcome the darkness, the wickedness, the vileness, the nastiness, the old man. And he gave us the power of what? A faith that works through love to crucify the old man and now live unto God all the days of our life. Do we truly believe that? That Christ is there with us while we're being tempted by the devil, while he's shooting fire darts at us? Do we truly, truly believe that the power of the Son of God can overcome and quench that fiery dart of the devil no matter how wicked it is, no matter how high the water is coming up into the boat, no matter how, how, how hot the fire is, guys, God is there with us. And he said, I'm with you to deliver you and to prepare a table for you right in the midst of your enemies. You must believe that where sin abounds, grace abounds more. Grace is stronger than he that is in the world because he's in us. He's the power. He's given us the power upon high. Believe it with all of your heart, might, soul, and your strength. And you will what? Hold fast to the head. You'll continue. You'll receive that crown that will never fade away. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Concerning the times and the seasons, verse 1. Brethren, you have no need that I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. 
For when they say peace and safety, see, they're saying that in the darkness. They're saying that still in their iniquity, still in their wicked sins, still with an impure heart. But Jesus said, the light are those that are blessed and pure in their heart, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. The day of the Lord so comes as a thief of the night. Uh, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction will come upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape, guys. There will not be any escape. They won't be able to lean to the sorcerers, the magicians, the astrologers, those that are, that are telling them lies, false prophets and teachers. All their words are going to be burned up by the firmaments of heaven. Verse 4, but you, you that have been what? Converted. You that are walking by faith. You that believe in the Son of God that loved you and gave himself for you. You, you are not in darkness. So that this day should overtake you as a thief. It's not going to overtake you. It's actually going to be what? A day of rejoicing. The day that you've longed for. The day that you've sought for. The day that you've put all of your hope and all of your trust in. Believing it. Putting on Christ. Walking in it. Eating his flesh. Drinking his blood. Having the mind of Christ. Yes! It's going to be a day like never before. But for those that are still in darkness. It's going to be a terrible day and treacherous and horrid day when that door is shut and they realize they're unwise virgins and they were believing the lie when all they had to do was believe the truth walk in the truth and live unto God all the days of their life God's commands are not grievous they're good for us they're holy hallelujah to the Lamb you are all sons of the light and sons of the day we are not of the night, nor of the darkness. No, we're divided from that. What communion has Christ with Belial? None. What communion has light with darkness? None. None. Come out from amongst them, my people. And be separate, saith the Lord, and I will receive you as sons and daughters. Hallelujah. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch. And be sober. Hallelujah. For those who sleep, sleep at night. Darkness. And those who get drunk are drunk at night. Darkness. Goats. Unjust. Unrighteous. Wretched. But let us who are of the day be sober. Clean. Chaste virgins, as Paul said, I present you as. Putting on the breastplate of faith and love. A faith that is working through love. Jesus said love is the fulfillment of the law. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 13 that love is the greatest gift of all of these. More than even faith and hope because that's once you, once you have Christ, once you're already there, once you receive that day that you've longed for, it's all about love now. Your faith has already come alive. Your hope has already come alive because you're with Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Glory to God. And now you're with who? Your bridegroom. And the love is now complete. Hallelujah to the Lamb. And as a helmet, the hope of salvation. Same thing is talked about in Ephesians 6. For God did not appoint us to wrath. That's for those that are in the darkness. Those that are still believing a lie. But to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Therefore, comfort each other and edify one another just as you also are doing. Now, if you're living in the darkness, let's turn to John chapter 3. We're going to look at verse 18. You know, John 3.16 is one of the most famous verses, and most Christians have memorized that. But verse 18 through 21, we're going to look at. Let's, un let's see what's going to happen to those that are in the darkness. L let's just see what the words of Jesus. He said, He who believes in him is not condemned but he who does not believe in is condemned already do you believe that the holy spirit can keep you in the in the faith quenching the fiery darts of the devil all the days of your life or do you believe a lie that after you've received the grace of god that you're going to fall back into your sin that you're going to go back into the darkness who are you going to believe man 
for God. And if you're preaching or if you're teaching, who are you going to please, man or God? Let me encourage you out there that are struggling speaking these words. Don't please man. Please God. For God will never dwell with iniquity or sin or flesh. For he commands all of us everywhere to repent and to turn from our iniquity, our sins, and to be crucified with his son, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. Hallelujah. And men love darkness rather than light. A lot of them try to twist it, add or take to, turn it for their own sin. To say that they can never, pur the, the glorious light of the gospel can never purge me completely clean for the rest of my life. But it can clean, a, clean me up a lot. All they're doing is taking the bad fruit and trying to chop down all the bad fruit on a tree that's already corrupt by the roots. You must take the ax to the root of the tree like John the Baptist said. And take that seed of God, that incorruptible seed. And that incorruptible seed fears God. And it fears going back to its sin. It fears iniquity. And it knows that the wrath of God is coming on all those that live in wickedness. That are not pure in heart. To fear God is the beginning of salvation, guys. Hallelujah. This is the condemnation. Light has come into the world. Men love darkness rather than light. Their deeds were evil. Their, their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light. Look at that. If they're still saying that they fall or they're still saying that you can't stop going back to the darkness, look, they hate the light. They hate Jesus. They hate his true words, the words that he truly spoke. These are in red lettering. These are words from him. They hate the light and do not come to the light lest his deeds should be exposed. But he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen. That they have been done in God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Let us love the light of the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Let us take heed to the good shepherd's voice. And let us not listen to those that are of the darkness. I tell you that you're going to fall after you've received the glorious light of the gospel. Grow in grace. Grow in knowledge. Be rooted and grounded in Christ like the scripture says. Overcome evil with good. He that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Be bold and claim it. Jesus is with you. While you're being tempted, he is with you to deliver you. For he also has been tempted. Just like you and I. Such as is common to man. With the temptation... God has made a way of escape, and that's through the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. The precious blood of Jesus Christ. I love you guys. God bless. In Jesus' name.